in today's video, we will put our ESP32 into deep sleep. And it's coming up right after the intro. Every video I create, I believe in helping you create new technology that can be innovative and creative. The way I create my videos is by making a wide variety of basic IT videos that are easy to understand and will create a base for your future IT creations. My tutorials will include IoT devices, design, databases, websites, apps and so much more. Hello world, my name is Asali, meaning basic in the language Hasa. So like I said earlier, we will try to put our ESP32 into deep sleep and check whether our ESP32 is consuming less battery or not. For this tutorial, I am using the SparkFun ESP32 thing. If you are using another ESP32, well don't worry, the code is the same for every ESP32. However, some ESP32s do seem to have a problem when they are in deep sleep and still consume a lot of battery. We will be doing three things that will be useful for you. Once your ESP32 is in sleep, deep sleep, you might want to save some data that you don't want to get lost. We will solve this by using RTC memory. Next, we will set a timer for when the ESP32 can exit deep sleep. And thirdly, we will use a GPIO pin or touch pins that you can use or touch to make the ESP32 exit deep sleep or when pressing a button. This is all very helpful stuff for your projects. RTC memory. Now before you can start doing anything, make sure you have followed my first video on how to upload to the ESP32. This is the introduction video in the upper right corner now or, in, or the link in the description down below. If you haven't done this, then probably none of the following code will work for you. Open up the Arduino IDE and let's create an integer that we can use as RTC memory. Now that we have created the integer, we want to set it as RTC memory. We do this by adding this in front of the integer. This marks the integer as RTC memory, meaning everything you save in this integer will be remembered whenever the ESP32 comes out of its deep sleep state. Next, go to the setup and print out a line. Now make sure the serial.begin is the same number as your uploading speed. You can check this by clicking on tools, and then check the uploading speed. Here it says 115,200, just like in my code. After the ESP32 the ESP has booted, we are going to up our counter by one. This means the number one will be added to the counter. Why I'm doing this will get clearer soon. After this, we want to set our pin number five to output. For the SparkFun ESP32, this is the standard built-in LED. So make sure you choose the correct pin for your ESP32 or connect an LED to the pin. Now add in a delay. This is needed because otherwise a weird glitch happens with the LED after a while, but this may not happen for you. After this, we want to turn on our LED and wait for another two seconds. This is to make clear that the ESP32 is on. Now we are going to write a short for loop where we will be using our counter as the max number. I've set this to the counter so that every time the ESP32 comes back out of deep sleep, it will run the void setup again, meaning the plus plus counter part right over here, will be hit over and over again, so every time the ESP32 leaves deep sleep, the for, the for loop will be entered more and more. Now to make clear how many times the counter will be added up, we will make the LED go off and on every time the for loop is hit. So add this to the for loop. Now every time the ESP32 boots, the LED will turn off and on one more time. This will prove that the RTC memory is actually working. Now after the for loop is done, we will just add in one more delay of 2 seconds just for aesthetics. Now we will set a timer for how many seconds our ESP32 can stay in deep sleep. After this passes, the ESP32 will boot up again. Now notice that the number is quite high. This is because the value that the timer resolves has to be in microseconds, so meaning six zeros and a number three in front, for example, will create a timer of three seconds. Now, to actually put our ESP32 into deep sleep, we add this line. And that's it. That's how easy it is in Arduino. Now, don't leave yet. Now, I will test this and check if the ESP32 actually uses less power. After that, we will try to boot up the ESP32 by simply touching a pin 
which could be very interesting in your future projects. And open up the Serial Monitor by pressing Tools and then Serial Monitor. And make sure this has 150,200 baud. And as you can see, the ESP32 is going into deep sleep and booting every time. And every time it does, the LED flashes one more time. And you see, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now let's hook this up to a battery. The schematic will be on screen right now. And as you can see, the ESP32 consumes up to 0.040 ampere when it's active. And once it goes into deep sleep, it only uses up to 0.001 ampere, which is a big difference. Now let's make the ESP32 boot again by not only the timer, but by touching a pin. And once it does get rebooted by touching the pin, it then will reset our RTC memory to make sure it actually works when hooked up to the battery. Now add in this in our setup right before setting the timer to 3 seconds. This will make sure the GPIO pin 15 will be listening for a touch and enables the touchpad as a wake-up source. Now the first value there uh, here is the T3 pin, so the touch or touchpad pin or GPIO 15. Now the second value will be calling a void of your choice, so you will have to add in a volt void called callback, so go back up and add this in like me. Unfortunately the weird thing about this void is that it won't be called, but fear not, we have another solution to reset the RTC memory. And the last value, trash or trash hold, is actually the value you have to define for the, dis for the sensitivity of the pin. The greater the value, the more the sensitivity, so go all the way up and define this value like so. Now that this is done, we go back to our for loop, and right in front of this we will add in two lines. This enables us to get the cause of the ESP32 access, uh, exiting deep sleep. Now, la now let's write an if statement, and if the wake up touchpad equals to the wake up reason, then we will set the counter to zero, like so. Now let's run this, and as you can see, the counter keeps going, uh, keeps on going up. Now let's reset the counter by touching GPIO pin 15, and boom, this time the LED only flashes once. So what to do now? I advise you to go and buy the ESP32 if you haven't already. I will put a link in the description of the Sparkfun ESP32 thing like me and a cheaper version so that you can choose. As well there will be a link to my Patreon page containing all of my code and schematics that are shown in all of my other videos like this one. Link for that down below or on screen now. So that's it for today guys, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on the next video and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye world.